All right, we're going to go on with uh, section 12.3, thermal processes in gases. Let's bring up the uh, PowerPoint notes. Okay, thermal processes can be complex, but luckily they can, be, they can often be broken down into a series of simple processes. Now we will look at the four most common processes. Each process corresponds to making one of the variables in the ideal gas law a constant, or assuming one of the three quantities in the first law of thermodynamics is zero. The four, process, the four processes are called isobaric, that's constant pressure, adiabatic, no thermal energy transfer, or Q equals zero, Isovolumetric, that's constant volume, corresponding to work equals zero if uh, the work is equal to P times delta V and delta V is equal, then the work is zero. And isothermal, uh, constant temperature, corresponding to delta U equals zero. Uh, there are other processes that don't fall into one of these four categories, so there will, they will be covered in a fifth category, category called a general process. What is essential in each case is to be able to calculate the three thermodynamic quantities from the first law, the work W, the thermal energy transfer Q, and the change in internal energy delta U. Okay. In an isobaric process, the pressure remains constant as the gas expands or is compressed. An expanding gas does work on its environment given by P delta V. The figure shows the PV diagram of an isobaric compression change from an isobaric compression. Again, the magnitude of the work done on the gas is just the area under the path in its PV diagram. Height times length or P times delta V. The negative of this quantity, um, the negative of this quantity, W equals de minus P delta V is the energy lost by the gas because the gas does work as it expands. This is the quantity that should be substituted into the first law. Okay, isobaric processes. The energy needed for the work done by the gas on its environment comes from the change in its internal energy, delta U. This tells us that the temperature of an expanding gas must decrease as the internal energy decreases. Expanding volume and decreasing temperature means that pressure must also decrease. As we can see um, from the ideal gas law, PV equals nRT. Uh, this means the only way that a process like this can remain at constant pressure is if thermal energy Q is transferred into the gas by heat. First, let's arrange the first law to solve for Q. Okay. Now we can substitute the expression for delta U and use the ideal gas law to substitute P delta V. Okay. There's another way to express this transfer by heat where CP equals five halves R. For ideal gases, the molar heat capacity at constant pressure CP is the sum of the molar heat capacity at constant vo volume CV and the gas constant R. Okay. Let's go to the next one. And that is Adiabatic processes. In an adiabatic process, no energy enters or leaves the system by heat. So the system is insulated or thermally isolated from its environment. In general, the system isn't mechanically isolated, so it can still do work. A sufficient rapid process may be considered approximately adiabatic because there isn't time for any significant transfer of energy by heat. For adiabatic processes, Q equals zero. So the first law becomes delta U equals W. The work done during an adi adiabatic process can be calculated by finding the change in internal energy. Also, as usual, the work can be computed from a PV diagram. For an ideal gas undergoing, undergoing an adiabatic process, we get the relationship shown, okay? 
where gamma is called the adiabatic index of the gas. After computing the constant on the right-hand side of our equation and solving for the pressure P, the area under the curve in the PV diagram can be found by counting boxes, which yields the work. The hot gas is allowed to expand so quickly that there is no time for energy to enter or leave the system by heat. The work done on the gas is negative and the internal energy decreases. This decrease occurs because kinetic energy is transferred from the gas molecule to the moving piston. Such an adiabatic cross expansion is of practical importance and is nearly realized in an internal combustion engine when a gasoline air mixture is ignited and expands rapidly against a piston. Okay. Um, the table shows values of the adiabatic index for several different gases. Okay, and we'll stop, we'll stop right there and we'll pick up with um, isovolumetric processes, which is uh, section 12.3.3. .3. Let's stop the share.